Hello and welcome to JXT Aviation. In this video, we will compare subsonic and supersonic aircrafts, look at what is meant by shock waves, and understand how a supersonic aircraft is designed. First, let's look at what is meant by a subsonic and supersonic aircraft. An aircraft may be defined as subsonic or supersonic by comparing its speed with the speed of sound. If the aircraft flies slower than the speed of sound, then it is called a subsonic aircraft. If the aircraft flies faster than the speed of sound, then it is called a supersonic aircraft. To understand this better, we need to know something called as the Mach number. So what is meant by Mach number? A Mach number is defined as the ratio of speed of the aircraft to the speed of sound. For subsonic aircraft, the Mach number is less than 1 since they fly slower than the speed of sound. For supersonic aircraft, the Mach number is greater than 1 since the aircraft can fly faster than the speed of sound. Usually, commercial subsonic aircraft can operate at 0.6 to 0.8 Mach. And supersonic aircrafts which are being planned to operate commercially will operate between 1.2 to 2 Mach. Now let's look at some of the features on a subsonic aircraft. In a subsonic aircraft, a turbofan, turboprop or a piston engine are usually used for creating the required thrust depending on the size and weight of the aircraft. In subsonic aircraft, a smooth cambered airfoil is used for the wing structure. This is to provide sufficient camber so that enough lift is generated when flying at low speeds. Now let's look at some of the features of a supersonic aircraft. A supersonic aircraft may have a turbofan or a turbojet engine only because the propellers are not efficient at supersonic speeds. The engine designs need to be modified to cater for the high speed of air entering the engine. This is done by increasing the length of the diffuser section of the engine. Another design change needs to be done at the nozzle section of the engine. Here, a convergent divergent nozzle has to be designed so that these aircraft can be accelerated to supersonic speeds. On supersonic aircrafts, a cambered airfoil is not efficient since it creates too much drag. So a thin airfoil needs to be used. A thin airfoil is sufficient since the lift produced is directly proportional to the velocity at which an aircraft is flying. And supersonic aircrafts fly at a very high speed. These airfoils are also symmetric and placed at a small angle of incidence in order to improve the lift generation and increase the efficiency of the wings. Just like airfoils, the fuselage on a supersonic aircraft is also designed to be slimmer than subsonic aircraft. This is because when an aircraft flies at supersonic speeds, shock waves are formed at the leading edge of the aircraft. The shock waves have a significant impact on the design of a supersonic aircraft, since it has severe effects on the air flowing across it. So let's see what are shockwaves and the impact it has 
on an aircraft. Shock waves are a thin layer or region that initially forms on the top of the wing when an aircraft enters the transonic range from Mach 0.8 to 1.2. When the aircraft accelerates to supersonic speeds, this shock wave is formed at the leading edge of the aircraft. Because of the shock wave that is formed, there is a severe increase in the temperature of the air downstream of the shock wave. So stronger materials are needed at the leading edge to withstand the high temperatures. There is also a severe increase in the drag because of the shock wave formation. So the engines need to produce more thrust to overcome this drag and hence more fuel is consumed. There is also a decrease in the total pressure of the air because of the shock wave. This will reduce the engine's efficiency. The shock waves will also result in a sonic boom on the ground which would be very loud and can even cause damage. So how should a commercial supersonic aircraft be designed? A commercial supersonic aircraft must be built using composite materials that can withstand high temperatures and severe temperature variations. The wings and the fuselage would be thinner to reduce the effects of drag due to the shockwave formation. The engine's diffuser section and the nozzle section have to be redesigned to reduce the losses and improve the fuel efficiency at supersonic speeds. The aircraft must also be easy to maneuver at low speeds and high speeds. This can be achieved by the fly-by-wire technology with the onboard computers and sensors. The aircraft should also be capable of flying efficiently at subsonic speeds when operating near an airport at low altitudes to prevent sonic booms. Commercial supersonic aircrafts are required because they will reduce the travel time from A to B by 50%. So that's all for my video on shockwaves and supersonic aircrafts. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, do subscribe and you can continue watching some of my other videos as well.